So a quick checklist for solar sync troubleshooting would include, number one, is the sensor mounted in a great location? I mean, are we getting enough sunlight all day long? And number two, have you made the right programming choices back at the controller as far as the region and your water adjust? And number three, does the sensor have communication going from the sensor back to your controller? We may not have good reception from point A to point B. Some of the situations that may arise that show that you don't have communication might be the fact that the controller is in the sensor off mode constantly, or the controller might not shut off during a rain or freeze event. As well, your season adjust may be running too high or too low, indicating that we lost communication from the transmitter back to the receiver. There are three parts to the wireless solar sync. The transmitter, or the sensor, the receiver, and the solar sync module that you might need if your face pack does not have solar sync capability built right in. The amount of sunlight the sensor receives during the day plays a critical role during solar sync calculations. It's imperative that the sensor be mounted in direct sunlight. That will make a difference as to where the solar sync adjusts his percentages on an average basis. You might need to relocate the sensor so it receives direct sunlight for the majority of the day and allow rainfall the opportunity to shut the controller down during rain events. So you want to verify that you have set the station run times based on 100% setting in the controller. So at 100% you're showing the peak run time that you'll use for the hottest month of the year. Now another situation might be to where the season adjust is always just averaging too low for your preferences. And in that situation, we'll look at how to select the correct region. There are four regions, one through four, to choose from, as well as one through 10 water adjustment per region in the solar sink. If you want a higher percentage on a regular basis, start with the one through 10 adjust and move it higher up towards 10 and see where that settles the percentage. That will give you a little higher percentage on average. Lowering the number closer to one will reduce the percentage. So if after changing the water adjust, and you wait a few days for that to average out during the three day rolling average, if you're still running too low on your percentage, you may have to adjust the region from four to three or from three down to two. By reducing that number, it's gonna make your percentage ride higher on a regular basis. If at that point in time, you still don't get the desired percentage range, you may have to look at communication from the sensor to the receiver, or you may have to look at the location where it's physically mounted because it might be in just too much shade for too many hours of the day. So let's verify that the sensor is actually communicating back to the controller and the receiver. What I'll do is I'll use the right arrow to manually start the program. And once the first station in the program is running, I'll use that same right arrow to advance to station five in this case, because he is out by where the sensor is going to be located at. Then we'll go out to that sensor location and we'll hold down the button at that location to ensure we're getting communication back here to the controller. So I'm here at the sensor mounting location. It's a bright sunny location on the back side of the house and I've turned the station on behind me running manually. What I'll be able to do is I will be able to hold down the test spindle button here at the sensor mounting location and I should see that the water does turn off behind me. Knowing that, I know I've got good communication from the sensor location back to the controller. One of the reasons that you may not have communication from this point is that you've left the sensor bypass switch in bypass and not active. Or you may have failed to remove the chrome jumper tab across the two sensor terminals. So if the water did not shut down while the program was running, we probably need to readdress the sensor back to the receiver and the controller. So to do that, what we'll do is turn off the power going to the controller, either by unplugging it or turning off the breaker. And when the controller powers down, so does the receiver. After it's powered down for a moment, go ahead and power it back up. And when it initially powers up, what you'll see in the controller is the words sensor off in that it's not communicating to the, to the sensor as of yet. So we need to make the sensor talk to the receiver. We'll hold the button down for a few moments and the light will blink on the sensor as well as the receiver. Then release the button and the host controller should go from sensor off to the current time of day saying they're communicating. 
So in testing communication, when you hold down the sensor spindle button, the red light should flash. That tells you the sensor is communicating. If the red light's not flashing, you might need to try another sensor. So we've already taken the sensor back to the controller and the receiver, and we've paired them up together back at the controller. So we've taken the sensor here to our proposed mounting location, and as you can see, it's in bright sunlight, so we'll get lots of sun, and it'll be affected by rainfall as well, too, with the rain event. Got to keep in mind that with any wireless communications, it is susceptible to electrical interference, so you want to be aware of what's between your sensor and your receiver electrically. Um, now, we'll make one final last check of the sensor by starting the program, initiating the water, and while the water is running, we'll hold down the spindle button here to ensure that we do get reception from here back to the controller. So to recap, the solar sink only affects the season adjust which in turn directly affects the minutes on set station runtime. As you're monitoring your system down the road, you're going to have pretty much one of two scenarios. Either a single station is too wet or too dry, and in that instance you can raise or lower the minutes at any time for that zone. Or you have the entire system either too wet or too dry. And in that case, you can go to the solar sink water adjustment 1 through 10 and increase or decrease that number. So remember, the days to water and your start times do not change, just the season adjust, which in turn changes the minutes shown for set station runtime. It'll turn off the water in a normal rain event as usual, and every night at midnight it gives you a new percentage. Whether or not that next day is a water day, you'll have a new percentage every night at midnight. So these adjustments might seem small, but in the long run it saves a ton of water. For more information on SolarSync and any questions, refer to HunterIndustries.com. And thanks for watching.